Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the newly reissued Transformers G1 inspired Headmaster Chrome Dome. Very similarly to my recently reviewed Headmaster Mindwipe, this figure here is essentially the same figure that we got as part of the Titans Return toy line, however this time enhanced in terms of the paint deco and slight variations in terms of the head sculpt design in order to better match his original G1 appearance. I also am a huge fan of how Hasbro have reissued these figures in the vintage style G1 packaging. In my my opinion that is such a nice added touch and these figures will be ideal for not only mint in box collectors but also collectors of the original G1 toys. As we take a look here at the front of the box we of course have the vintage Transformers logo more than meets the eye. We have an amazing image here of Chrome Dome with the Transformers logo here at the bottom. It includes snap on accessories with a clear window view display of Chrome Dome in his vehicle mode. We also have a clear display here of his Headmaster Autobot Stylor and then as we take a look here to the side of the box we have an image of him in robot mode as well as here in vehicle mode taking a look here at the back of the box once again we have that amazing image of fortress maximus fighting against scorponok and of course we do have the classic tech specs here of chrome dome which you can of course clip and save you can see here that chrome dome's function is to be a computer programmer a battle plan is only as good as its programmer spent several thousand years crunching numbers at cybertron's institute for higher programming before a decepticon attack reduced it to a pile of smoking microchips and then of course here on the side of the box we have those same product images with the top of the box showcasing various transformation steps from vehicle mode to robot mode so without further ado let's crack chrome dome open and see what awaits us inside and so here we have chrome dome and autobot styler opened up and out of the packaging and much like Mindwipe, i unfortunately missed out on pretty much all of the original titans return version so when hasbro did announce they were going to be reissuing the headmasters this time with a little bit more of a g1 inspired deco i knew that i had to add these to the collection as this was probably my best chance of getting the definitive representations of these characters into my chug lineup. Taking a look here at Autobot Styler himself, very similarly to Vorath, I think the detail and the sculpt work on this particular piece is incredibly impressive, especially for the figure's scale. Something which really surprised me was the level of detail and definition that they've managed to get for the tiny head sculpt of the Headmaster himself. You can clearly see there the visor, the nose and the mouth clearly sculpted and I love the detail to his actual helmet as well as the detail for the rest of the body. You can see the torso, the arms and the legs have all come out really well. Very quickly going over his integration here for the vehicle mode, there are a couple of ways in which you can actually store him. The first of which is tabbing him into this almost bed section that we've got here for one of his blasters. So he can simply just rest there at the top and fire this weapon, which I personally don't think looks too bad whatsoever. However, my preferred method of storing him is to actually integrate him within the vehicle itself in order to give you the illusion that he is indeed piloting it. So in order to do this, you just want to wriggle this top section here up and over, which I think is such a nice attention to detail. So you can lift this up and that will reveal an almost cockpit here for Styler. Just bend the legs just like this, plonk him in there. Of course, maybe move the arms out a little bit to allow for some clearance and then bring this section here over the top, snap that back into place. And there you have Stylor piloting Chrome Dome's vehicle mode. And once again, I think that that is such a nice attention to detail. Taking a look here at Chrome Dome in his vehicle mode, something which surprised me upon opening this figure was how large his vehicle mode actually is for a deluxe class. Now, I am aware that the Titans Return toy line did come way before the War for Cybertron trilogy, and the War for Cybertron trilogy was really the line that got me into generation figures. Before that, I was mainly only into the live action movie stuff, so I am unfamiliar with the scale from previous lines, but it was certainly quite surprising to me to see how much some of the figures had decreased the War for Cybertron when compared to some of the older deluxes from the Titans Return toy line. But nonetheless, as far as details are concerned, you can see some really nice definition here to the sculpt of the side of the vehicle. As I do not own the original version, I am unaware of the differences between this reissue and the original release. However, I do know that the smoky plastic that they have used here for the actual wheels is a lot darker than compared to the original version. And you can also see that we've got some very nice painted gold hubcaps. As we take a look here towards the front of the vehicle, you can see some fantastic definition here to the sculpt with the electric blue headlights as we take a look here from a bird's eye perspective i love the detail that we've got going on here as well as the paintwork this in my opinion has all come out so nice and precisely especially where the silver and the red is concerned and then once again as we just take a look here towards the top you can see some nice clean red paint apps and then taking a look here towards the rear end of the vehicle although no paint apps have been applied here i still do think that the sculpt work has come out really well as far as rolling is concerned i was very surprised to see that despite him having peg on wheels than as opposed to my preferred pinned on wheels he 
does actually roll really well, which I think is great. As far as accessories are concerned, you saw earlier on in the review that he does indeed come with two blasters. This one here is mainly designed to integrate with the actual headmaster himself, as it has of course been designed in a way to facilitate him. But the second weapon, I believe, is mainly intended for his robot mode, that being this blaster. And once again, the sculpt work, as well as the overall presentation, in my opinion, is very crisp and precise. Now, getting down to transformation here for Chrome Dome, he's actually quite fun to go back and forth from robot mode to vehicle mode and of course vice versa so to begin with you're going to want to pop open the front windscreen much like we did when we actually stored styler within there and then you're just going to want to bring this section here all the way up to the top and you can see these two tabs will peg into these two slots on either side so just align those up appropriately take the headmaster here fold the arms in on either side and then collapse the legs down so that the head mode is locked and loaded for the robot mode. We can then turn our attention here to the bottom of the figure. You're going to want to bring this chest plate down. I wouldn't recommend tabbing it in all of the way just yet. We can then dislodge this section, bring this section here back, take the arms and these here will fold out to the sides. We can then come here to the legs and basically what you'll do here is split these and then these sections here will open up, bring the legs down on either side, rotate here at the waist and then it's just a matter of flipping out the feet, clipping that into place, and of course, repeating the exact same process. So just snap that in there nice and securely. We can then bring this chest piece down until it clips into place, fold out the fists on both sides, and repeat the same process here on this side. Now, bringing this section here back does require a little more attention as you are going to want to move certain pieces out of the way in order to allow for some clearance. So we can just bring those arms down and you can see how we do have these two tabs here and here that will peg into two slots here and here. So just bring this entire assembly down, ensure that these arms are clipped into place and that will snap in there nice and securely. We can then of course bring back Stylor in his head mode, snap that into place, and here we have Autobot Chrome Dome fully transformed up into his robot mode. And so taking a look here at Chrome Dome in his robot mode, once again, another really well done deluxe class figure. Personally for me, I do still prefer Mindwipe, but that is just down to sole preference as I was a huge fan of Mindwipe's design. But when comparing Chrome Dome here to his original G1 counterpart for an older release that perhaps wasn't so inclined to actually focus on the collectors, I really do think that Hasbro did a pretty decent job at this figure, and maybe if they were to approach this same character now in the War for Cybertron trilogy, I'm pretty sure that we could get a fantastic figure, but nonetheless, taking a look here at Chrome Dome in his robot mode, we'll first of all start off with that fantastic looking head sculpt. I really do love the paint deco that we have got going on here, of course. It has been given a very nice glossy white finish there, with some silver metallic paintwork for the faceplate, and then of course orange there for the mouth guard. I do like the attention to detail, such as the blue highlights for the eyes just to bring chrome dome to life i think that that is a really nice added bonus as we take a look here towards the torso you can see very similar details to the actual front section here of the hood so despite this being a faux piece they haven't skimped out you can see that we do get the silver and red highlights that we also saw on the hood section of the vehicle mode as well as the autobot insignia and for the most part i think that the sculpted in detail has come out really well on this figure personally it maybe would have been nice to get some nice silver details here on the sides of the arms however of course that may not have matched his original character model but just taking a look here down to the lower section you can see some nice definition there to the sculpt as far as the fires are concerned and you can see some nice paintwork here for the shins my only major area of critique with this figure is that i do find the legs to be a little too bulky for my personal taste it maybe would have been interesting to see them find a way to actually store this within this hollow cavity i don't think that that could have been too far out maybe if they could have brought this section here up and over and had this actually tuck in there that maybe would have cleaned the legs up and created for a little bit more of an accurate silhouette but over Overall, it is quite a nice deluxe figure, and as mentioned earlier on in the review, seeing as this is slightly older of a release, I am easily able to forgive some of those minor flaws. Turning to articulation, the figure does have a ball joint here at the head, and I am happy to report that unlike Mindwipe, there is no evidence here of the mould degrading. All of the joints do feel very tight, whereas on Mindwipe, we had some floppy legs and a floppy ball joint for the head. Here for Chrome Dome, everything does feel rather tight, so the head can look left to right, of course, look up and down, it can tilt side to side. Full 360 rotation here on ball joints for the arms these can also hinge out to the sides we do get a full 360 rotation here at the bicep 90 degree bend there at the elbow full 360 rotation here at the waist the legs can kick forwards that far as well as back to that far he can of course do the splits full 360 here at the fire 90 degree bend here at the knee and then finally taking a look at the feet due to transformation these can pivot forwards and backwards ever so slightly so overall as far as robot mode is concerned i think that chrome dome is certainly a very solid deluxe as far as weapons are concerned you can see that i do have 
have this blaster here pegged on you can of course bring in the weapon that we saw in vehicle mode however for me it's a little too big for my liking and I'm not a huge fan of the blocky nature but you can certainly have him posed with this weapon and it can create for some display options which makes him look like a formidable enemy to the enemy Decepticons. And so some final thoughts this is currently the second figure that I'm actually reviewing as part of this retro reissue line and I've got to say that I have been very impressed with the quality so far. Mindswipe for me was an excellent figure very well done alt mode and robot mode and I thought that his colour scheme really did pop. Chrome Dome here is no exception his robot mode looks very well done the transformation whilst it's on the more simplistic side I still think is very effective and despite it being simplistic it does make going back and forth from robot to vehicle mode rather enjoyable and fun to do so. Vehicle mode I also think looks really well done and the headmaster is so detailed that was something that very pleasantly surprised me. The joints all feel very robust and the plastic itself is very high quality this figure feels nowhere near as cheap as I initially suspected so my high praise for these figures may be down to my low expectations as up until this wave I hadn't really had a great experience with the Titans return line. I'd picked up a few of the deluxes however missed out on the majority of them and the deluxes that I did pick up weren't all that great so Chrome Dome and Mindwipe are certainly winning my praises in terms of the Titans return line and I'm really looking forward to seeing as to what the next two figures in this line have in store for me. So as mentioned in my Mindwipe review if you unfortunately did miss out on the original run of this figure and I believe even the Takara Tomi release then this is certainly a figure that you have to pick up. I think that the paintwork has come out really well and as these figures are taking on a little bit more of a G1 inspired deco I think that this is probably the most accurate representation we are going to be getting from Hasbro for this character for the foreseeable future. I really do hope that you enjoyed my review if you did please do let me know down in the comment section below. I currently have Hardhead and Brainstorm let to review so be sure to let me know which one you would like to see me take a look at next and until my next review I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.